104.7 The K, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens. This is Dark Side of the Stream, episode 145. And this might be the first episode that I didn't have to goof with my phone when we started. It went straight in. I don't know what it happened. It went straight in. I don't know what happened. He looks good. Uh, do you the connection's good? good. I don't think I look good, but we sound I was going to start doing this with sunglasses and a hat. What happened? He did it last, he did last week. He brought it. This week, this week, he's like, ah, screw it. Um, this week was my pick on the 145 episode of Dark Side of the Stream, a documentary about one of my favorite actors. Just action, all around people in the world, star, the history of the world, Arnold Schwarzenegger. player. Yeah. It's called Arnold. It's on Netflix. Came out a couple weeks ago. And it's an incredible story. They break it up into three parts. Beautiful. Weightlifting, actor, politician. Because yeah. really, he climbed all three of those summits. Yep. As far as you can go, like, and obviously, if if he was if he was American born, he could have run for president. And Dude, I'll tell you right now, I'd if he was, him. I would have voted for him, yeah. and I'm sure you would have. And can the rest of the world, the rules and just let it happen. Um, uh, that's gonna open the door for some because because ultimately, I think the the reason they wrote that in was because if you're American born, the thought is you're gonna you know protect America, but if you're <laughs> born in another country and you come in, you know your allegiance might yeah, be to that country. You never know. But again, that constitution was written a long time ago and it could be changed but we're talking about arnold and in the first episode they do nothing but talk about his bodybuilding career which is just unbelievable uh i i'll start as a kid um when i played football and baseball and basketball and everything in sports i did weight training and pumping iron was where it started my dad got me into that stuff we followed arnold's weight training program that he came up with what? did Mike, all three weights yeah 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 um and again now it when you the thing that is disappointing because I didn't know that he did use steroids until this documentary I had no clue I thought this whole time he come did on, that on his own come on Mike <laughs> I, I I know, and again, you, you, I never heard the. You never hear when it comes to Arnold. You never hear the word steroids ever, 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 ever. It ever, sounds ever. like he just kind of went light on it. He, he did. He used he cycles. used it with doctor. And at the time period, it was a thing. People used it. Um, they still do. And it, again, it, it was a doctor prescribed thing. They would let him do it for four months, right into competition, and then he would quit for the year. We'll never do it again. There are guys that do it every day. So there's a whole difference between how he did it with doctor's care and again it wasn't like the the guy was just taking steroids he'd work out for 30 minutes and he got huge no, he was on it three to four times a day yeah. when he talked about his workout routine in austria when he would write his sets Dude, on yeah, the wood what a beast bro and then just mark it as he would go down it's just it it the drive. Yeah, the, I was just gonna say the dedication. Like yeah, dedication and drive in and he, every in everything that he did. Yeah, it's, everything uh, he did, and or does, it's or does, and it, it's crazy because uh, you his brother died when he was seventy one, drunk driving accident, and he makes the comment that you know what made me who I am is what destroyed him because he was a lot more fragile of a person. Yeah, um, he was more sensitive, and yeah. it ended up killing him. And in and in the same person, it just changed. It just made me push and push and push and push and push and push. And there that that footage of him talking about how his dad died in, in, in the seventies, and he's talking about how it doesn't affect him because he doesn't let emotions affect him. Yeah. Eventually, he had to, and that's when he became an actor. After he won Mr. Olympia countless times, well, he, he won. Competing he just yeah. said, I got to let somebody else yeah, win or I'm yeah. just going to continue to win it. And it doesn't mean anything any, to me anymore. But just to see his progression from a farm kid in Austria to working in a gym, sleeping in a cot, thinking it's the best thing in the world to basically getting found, moved to L.A., starts working in Venice Beach, Gold's Gym, all these stuff. And the guys that he worked with, they love him. You know, everybody's very likable guy. Everyone you know? loved him. Yeah. And yeah, he talked a lot of trash early on, but he had a word for it. It was like a German Schmee. Schmee. <laughs> that's yeah. what that was what it was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> BS. Yeah. He, he, that's true, man. That's what you got to do. You gotta it helps your confidence. Yep. And yep. he was also very, very forthcoming when he said, you know, that's that's what I put out there. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's inside. It's yeah. one of those yeah. things that the persona is different. He knows about uh the performance aspect of yeah. everything he had a lot of good people that helped him on along the way and we will talk about his next endeavor peak, the actor arnold next dark side of the stream on 104.7 the cave
104.7 The Cave, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens back in the studio It's Dark Side of the Stream, episode 145, discussing the documentary series Arnold on Netflix. So, episode two talks about the summit Arnold climbed being an actor. Which is a really good example of people say, look, you're never going to be an actor. You're a bodybuilder. You don't speak English. Your accent's you're, you're not. Fit. Yeah, you're not going to work. There's and no so, way you can be a leading man. And There's he no could have gone, yeah, you're right. And just then, But he says, no, you know what? I'm going to do it. He had some missteps. Uh, Hercules in New York was his first major role, and he barely could speak English. You could tell. I think he, he got kind of jammed. He got, yeah, he kind of got thrown into it. And then he just kept on working on it. He said, though, and this is very interesting and something I didn't know also, was that he didn't have the reason he didn't have to take those junk, junk jobs, you know, being a superhero, paint, you know, whatever to, to make it in LA was because by the mid 70s, he was already a millionaire. Not because of bod building, yeah. but because of real in st- real estate yeah, investments. Investing, yeah. By like 72 or three, he owned an apartment complex in LA. Then he had a shopping center because the guys he surrounded himself with were like, hey, you want to make some money? You want to make yeah. some real coin? This is how you do it. And so he listened, took English classes in college, business classes. And like I said, by the mid 70s, he was already a multimillionaire. Yeah. He didn't need it. So he waited and he was in the position to when, when the perfect role came along, which would end up being Conan, which yeah. is one of my favorite movies of all time, um, which that story in itself was badass because he got into it with the producer because the produ- he goes into this guy. He's a little Italian dude and they're starting to talk oh, yeah. about something and he goes, oh, you'll never he, he he, 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 I think, I think Arnold made the comment about how he was little or something, and he didn't like that. And then he, he said, "Well, you'll, you'll never work because your accent's so thick." And he said, "Well, that's funny because you also have an accent." And then he, the producer's like, "You're done. You're out of here." Yeah. yeah. Until that kind of blacklisted him a little bit for a, for a time period until the guys who bought the rights to Conan and the guy they assigned it to direct it said, look, we're not going to do this unless it's Arnold. It's got to be Arnold. It's got to be Arnold. Yeah, and that was the stepping stone to greatness. And that's really what started the whole action figure action trajectory. Hero. Action, yeah, hero. action hero trajectory. Yeah. Because as he mentioned, in the mid to late 70s, like it was Al Pacino. He was skinny. Car yeah, it wasn't, there it wasn't, wasn't no guy, big guy. burly dudes beating each other killing each other and it was all this also stuff. cool saying how him and stallone had this competition other, going yeah oh he killed that many people i'm gonna kill this many in this movie yeah oh he's got that gun i'm gonna have this gun i'm gonna have a rocket launcher yeah it was great the the line that sly says he's like you know i would have thrown him over a cliff if i could but i just couldn't find the cliff which oh. that that's a great line but again that started the whole trajectory those two guys i mean Dude, and, and it just completely flipped the world one of my favorite movies of all time is commando I cannot really? tell wow. you. And en- oh God! Actually, what's interesting is right before I wa- I watched it this this weekend, and right before we did it, one of my best friends who lives in Kentucky, there's a it's like a Wordle type game where they just post up a picture, and you have to guess the movie or show from that picture, and it's like one scene. And he just sent me back. He goes, "You'll be so proud of me. I got this on my first guess, and it was Man. the House of Commando, just that shot." And I yeah. I mean, I knew immediately. It's my favorite. It's one of my favorite Arnold movies. It's just so damn good. He kills everybody. If you ever want to get really drunk, play the Commando drinking game. And every time Arnold kills somebody, you have to take a drink. Oh, wow. You won't make it thirty minutes, forty five minutes. Wow. There's no way. Okay. Yeah, it's right, good. There you go. But that actor portion was incredible. The ups and downs. How he, you know, had to kind of learn how to deal with box office failures. You yeah, know what I mean? Dumper, Critics, I guess, right? Stuff like that, because you know he was very, very crucial on himself, and then had to understand that you know sometimes things work, and sometimes and they had him branch don't. out and start doing comedy. You know, comedy, I could be comedy twins, actor. which yeah, was great. Right, Junior, not so good. But we will talk about the third summit Arnold Schwarzenegger climbed. The politician next dark side of the stream on one hundred four point seven, the cave. The Cave, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, episode 145. Arnold. All right. So he makes mention of this multiple times in this docuseries. He references climbing summits. So the first summit he climbed, of course, was the bodybuilding one. Got to the top, looked over, and saw another one. And that was the acting summit. Then he climbed that one. Became a leading man. Multiple times over. Multiple huge movie successes. I mean, just more, box office yeah, smashes. More money than you could ever For a guy who was already a millionaire, like, he just now wanted he just to prove that on. he could do it. I, mean, I piled it on. Once he was done with that, 
He looks over and he sees another peak. And this is the world of politics. And now he had been aligning himself with a lot of Republicans for years. Well, and he was, um, and then he married a Kennedy. So he married a Kennedy. Yeah. So he, he was so, both parties, right? In both well, parties. Well, yeah, yeah, which is interesting. Like, you, you know, like really, really, really liberal East Coast, like Kennedy family. And then he also aligned himself with Ronald Reagan. He was buddies with him. Yeah. A lot of those guys out in California because he was obviously an actor and, and worked in those circles. Then in the uh, late 80s or early 90s, he was like the ambassador for fitness under George Bush Sr. And then decided, screw it, I'm going to be a senator and won. And won. And ran his term. Yep. And we'll go back to what we said in the beginning. If he would have ran for president, would you have voted for him? Yeah, I think I, I think he would be the guy, man. He just makes it happen. And he, he joins both parties to, you know, both sides. He was work with both sides and get them to, that's the move. That's the that's move. the move, and that's what people aren't doing now. Maybe uh, this Robert F. Kennedy now is trying to do that. So let's see if he can do that. But they, working both sides together is the move, not separated. No, you know? no, no. And that's that's the problem I think in, in w which we never really ever talk about politics, and we try not to anyway. But that's I think the real big issue right now is that the both vice sides vice. right now are so damn loud, they're so polarizing. But those are the complete opposite yeah. sides of the spectrum. Two opposite. Most of us are right in here. Yeah, Some of want. us agree. Yeah, that actually makes sense on Both the sides conservative got some good side points, right. and that actually yeah. makes sense on the See, liberal I side think people are coming around on. i think people are coming more around to that idea now it's not so black and white like no. the polar opposites want you to believe it is it's yeah. not all yes or all no it yeah, needs to be a, kind of a, a mixed bag area. and, and arnold is that way yes he is a republican on the ballot but at the same time that doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have a bunch of liberal views either yeah yeah he did he's, he was smart about it he yeah did. he was yeah. and and it wasn't a case of where a guy like you know played both sides just to see which way he no, comes out on top. he truly was just a middle man he was know? just he did he did what he thought was and right. he was the slickest too because when they started throwing sex scandals at him he was like hey yeah i worked in hollywood i've probably done some stuff that i shouldn't have done i'm sorry but this is you know yeah uh, I, I was kind of surprised it. he owned it, man. I you was know? surprised they went there, but I was like, they have to eventually because yeah. how could you not tell this guy's life story without talking about some of the things the that he did in the muscle bound celebrity circuit in that Hollywood acting in the eighties. Come on. That stuff, you know, went on, you know, Oh, I'm sure. Crazy wild well, I, it's on. so funny. Cause I saw a video of Dolph Lundgren over the weekend and he was talking about, uh, coming back and getting back into Hollywood with like the expendables and that period of time from like 97 to like 06 or 07 where he didn't work at all because he had just been out of Hollywood, went to went to Spain, kind of got out of it. And he was talking about how his wife's credit card bill was like 60K a month. And he just said, well, every time I'd have an affair, I'd have to go buy her something new, a new Ferrari, a new something. She didn't care. I just happened to, I just kept having to buy it. Eventually it became yeah, too there's expensive. A, there's a lot of those scenarios. <laughs> I love you, Dolph. Oh man, that's the, I laugh so hard, but he wasn't the only one that was doing that stuff. And obviously Arnold had his mistakes, but he owned up to him, like you yeah, said. And he won. And he did, he, he did what governor. he did. Yep, he, he was honest and that's that. But it seems now that when you look at his life, he seems like he's doing what he wants. The the home he has in the mountains, wherever the hell that is, oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Utah, whatever that we was. said the warmth of Austria with the with the big the and openness the of, America. of America. Yeah, yeah. Which, he's a still a funny guy. He's hilarious. Yeah. You know? Also, that story and uh, something I want to come back to where he's talking about growing up and his you know his his mom was so concerned with him because he'd had all these bodybuilders on his bedroom wall and all the girls, all the guys at his age usually had yes. girls and he's like he and had guy you, pictures you got all wall. these muscly oiled up dudes. Yeah, with mom those but it paid off it's like snap when snap had pictures of striper all over his room his mom was like what is <laughs> striper man all right we're gonna give it our reviews next arnold dark side of the stream on 104.7 the cave Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio one more time. It is Dark Side of the Stream, episode 145. So how many protein shakes would you give I'm, this documentary? I'm, I'm going all the way. I'll go five. I great. will go five. It was great. Just it's because, another perfect score. Yeah. It yeah. was great, man. I agree. The guy is so likable, you know, so likable and still so funny to this day. And even when he said he was doing the debates for the governor, he said he studied. And if there was subjects he didn't know, he had his comedy writers write one-liners and he would throw one-liners out there and joke. Ah, dude. 
Smart guy. Can you say, man? Somebody called him the most calculating individual they ever met. Hey. And it seems like that his his brain He's just works differently. He's man. You know, yeah. we could um, all learn something. Yeah. Uh, and not, not, you know, there are some things that he said that I was kind of like, ah, you're going to have to do like with the, you, you still kind of get the feeling that he doesn't process his emotions like yeah, yeah. in a, I don't want to say a healthy way. Cause I think it's relative. Like how you process right. your emotions is relative to you Everybody's, as long as you're not harming yourself or harming any of us. Right. Yeah. But you can still kind of get the gist that the dude, ha- he has some things that he really hasn't come to grips with, but he won't. He just moves nah, forward, just moves, moves forward, forward. Yeah. moves forward, he moves forward. And hopefully it never comes back to bite him in the ass. But Arnold, thank you so much for the movies. Thank you for the awesome documentary. That's great. Good take, so Mike. good. It was good so take, great Mike. to watch it. Made up for some of those dumpers. And every time I, every time I, 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 I watch these things, I'm like, oh god, I gotta watch Commando. Again. Well, oh god, I gotta watch. Terminator. I'll tell you, I probably never would have watched this one, you know, if you wouldn't have told me to. So. I'm glad you did. I'm, I'm you glad probably... that I did too. That's why we do this because we find hidden gems. Yep. That, you know, probably a lot of people listening would never watch it. No, watch and it. It's good. speaking of a lot of people listening, uh, everyone has reached out to me in the last week about whether or not I'm going to watch the next documentary Jay's going to pick. Jay, what are we watching <laughs> next week? I yeah, uh, I feel I'm stealing a pick because this one is right up your alley. Quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Mahomes, Mariota, and Kirk Cousins. So it's good. It's on yep. Netflix. It, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a few episodes in and it's it's awesome. I, you know? I'm excited to watch it. Uh, I know from what everyone's told me about it that we're very lucky to have Patrick Mahomes yeah. as our quarterback, yeah. and that's how I feel. It's uh I'm excited to watch it. And now, yes, guys, we're gonna watch it. Next episode, Dark Side of the Stream will be about quarterback. You can always stream these live at 9 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube, listen to it during my show at 9 a.m. or Jay's show at 6 p.m. Or as a podcast on our 104.7 The Cave app. I'm Mike the intern. That's G. Stay Stevens. We watch we watch movies so you don't have, have to. to. Start well, side of stream on 104.7 The Cave. We'll be back.